gel. Later, we incorporate a drug, so the cell is relaxed. So we can obtain the fiber displacement. We have the cell is contracting, so the cell is deformed. When we kill the cell in this way, the cell is relaxed, and the fiber recover, recover the position. We quantify this, and later solving an inverse problem, we are able to determine the forces that the cell are doing. With this technique, we can see here the difference field displacement and force displacement in the case of control cells with the nucleus in the middle is the nucleus, uh, a stiffer nucleus, and on the right is the stiffer cell. And we observe differences in the displacement and in the forces. We try to quantify a little bit more this, this effect, and we measure the, what we define the contractility. The contractility is the properties, are the properties of the forces, the total force on the epicenter of the cell. If we see here in the blue line and the green line, we can observe that the amount of forces that the cell are doing, although we increase the stiffness, are very similar. However, the forces that the cell exert are higher when we increase the cytoskeleton properties. But what is more interesting, that the amount of force is, is very similar in the three cases, is the way that the cells are doing the forces. So we define the parameter that is polarity, is the difference, the ratio between the highest force divided by the total contractility, the total force. And we observe that to achieve the same invasion capacity, when the nucleus is stiffer, the cell exerts forces that are more directional. So the cell is able to modify the way to exert forces, exerting forces more directional. So with this, I would like to, to finish this last part, the conclusion are cells are able to generate similar levels of contractile force. Cells are able to compensate the force balance a function of the internal properties of the cells. Cells with a nucleus, with higher properties in the nucleus, need to polarize more, need to polarize the contractile force. And finally, I would like to transmit that not only external properties of the extracellular matrix is relevant, Cell uh, internal properties of the cell are also crucial. Of course, this, this work is, is part of the collaboration of, of, different, of different groups, collaboration with the lab of Trepa, Professor Trepat and Roca Cusac. We also I would like to thanks to Professor Roger Kahn for all his help in, in developing the microfluidics experiments laboratory of Professor Fabri for doing the experiments in, in different cell stiffness and collaboration in the Institute of Science Materials in, in Zaragoza. And of course, this is part of, of the people that are working in, in my group in, in the University of Zaragoza. And it is only possible with money, if we don't have money, but it's very difficult to do research. So, I also have to thank to the Spanish Ministry and the IRC. So, uh, to finish, I would like to remember that we are going to organize the next conference of BPH for in silico medicine in Zaragoza in September 2018. Thank you very much. Thank you, Manu, for that really interesting talk. It's uh, also really nice to see how your ERC has, has kicked you off into a new direction and you're, you're making huge progress in this area. Are there questions from the audience to this talk? We have two microphones and just hold your hand up so we can see. Thank you. Thank you very much for, for this impressive talk. That's a curiosity. Uh, when the cell move, uh, move uh, collectively, and then so each cell so pull on the on the matrix, 
So I guess that you, you very locally, because of the nonlinearity of uh, the mechanical behavior of the fibers, very locally, so you have uh, dynamic changes of stiffness. And this... Of the, of the matrix? Yeah. Yes, yeah, sure. Yeah. And so, does this change indeed so contribute to a, a multi-scale effect of uh, durotaxis? But you mean with we are doing transform microscopy, we, we are taking into account this kind of nonlinear. So we have a model that incorporates this, that all these kind of nonlinear effects. So when the cells are doing forces, this nonlinear effect in the matrix are taken into account. So I think this effect in particular is, is considered. Other things is that can occur phenomena like unbinding or additional phenomena that rebinding. But we have not studied this case. But what is the general behavior of the gel? All the gels have been tested in experiments, and we have created models according to the experiments. So the nonlinear behavior of the gel is, is completely considered. There's a question here in the front as well. Well, uh, thank you very much for your very nice and interesting talk. I have a curiosity regarding the second part, in particular, how easy into, is to interpret the results using collagen gel models? I mean, when doubling the concentration, for example, you are not only altering the biomechanical properties, but also the biochemical environment. For example, you are doubling the RGD adhesive sites. It's really difficult, yes. First of all, the collagen gels have a high variability of property depending on, so we have to be very careful with the temperature, the pH conditions, everything. Uh, event, uh, it's very difficult. We have problems negotiating with the companies that uh, give us the collagen. We have discussion with them because sometimes some part come with different properties, so it's, it's really difficult. But of course, um, I think we are given steps in the fall in the sense that we try to have always the collagen and we, have, we try to follow strict uh, protocols in order to have the lower variabilities as possible, but it's really difficult. Thank you very much. There's a question towards the middle. Oh, thank you. Um, brilliant work. Congratulations. It's just a curiosity, the question. And the, the last four slides. Yeah. Um, I, I will, yeah. How do you define polarity? Polarity, you said, is the maximum force divided by the total force. How we, do you define the directionality in that concept? No, we, 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 we don't... Okay, we, we have to, to analyze more this data, but what we have done is... We have, the to okay, we have the total forces that the cells are doing. So in this moment, the contractility is the addition of all the forces in modulus over the epicenter. Okay? So later, what we did is we have all these components, and we calculate the ratio of the highest forces divided by the total forces. So what happened is there are in the case of the, of the laminin, what happened, there are forces that the number of, I, I mean, the total force is more or less similar, but the amount of, of these forces is bigger in some direction and are smaller in, in other direction in comparison with the other. So it means that the cell is, are doing more force in any direction in comparison with other direction. That we call uh, polarity, but okay, we have defined this this value, okay. But it could be interesting to analyze how is this difference, and also to compare with the structural architecture of the gel. But okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you for the stimulating discussion. To give you time to get to the next session, I'll close this now. And if you have further questions, of course, you can meet during the coffee breaks and lunch breaks as well. Thank you once again for an excellent lecture. Thank you.